Hey there, welcome back to Relationship Talks. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video, Marriage Demolition. I, 32 years old, caught my wife, 30 years old, cheating on me in our marriage bed only a few hours earlier. I'm now locked up in my father's fishing cabin, trying to figure out what I'm going to do from here. I feel useless and ruined. Because of that wrath, I'm filled with rage. My whole life has been thrown down the toilet, and I have no one to speak to. The one person I believed I could confide in had deceived me and attempted to lie about everything. I just terrified three individuals, one of them was myself. I'm fortunate if the police aren't searching for me right now. If they are, I'll deal with it when I have no choice. I work in construction, namely demolition. The group I work with travels often, and I had been gone for 10 of the 14 days I was meant to be gone. Due with the rain, it's extremely difficult to blow up wet items, and the forecast, I chose to go back home until I was assured we could work. Again, my flight didn't arrive till after midnight. I wanted to surprise my wife, so I didn't tell her I was going to be there. I drove the four to five minutes to our residence from the airport. My wife discovered some gorgeous land away from any other houses via her real estate work eight years ago. I completed constructing our home two years later, which we have adored ever since. Because we have a four-car garage, any automobiles parking in front are odd. My heart sank as I saw a black SUV that I didn't recognize. I knew right away. I mean, I hadn't picked up on any signs of difficulty in our marriage. We hadn't gotten into any conflicts, and our life was fantastic and frequent. But I had a feeling I'd find out what i discover once I got in. She would have told me if the automobile belonged to a relative who was visiting. Part of me hoped it belonged to a female colleague who had had much too much wine on a visit and wanted to sleep it off. But it would have been very unusual. I sat outside the home for at least 15 minutes, contemplating things. However, I placed my vehicle approximately six inches away from the driver's side of the SUV, which was parked next to a retaining wall. Whoever it belonged to would not be getting into their vehicle and driving away without my permission, nor would they be busting out a front or rear window. I parked my vehicle and entered via the deck's rear entrance. For a gun, I have a concealed carry weapon permit. Before getting into my vehicle at the airport and heading home, I had placed my holster on. I wasn't worried about my life, but I was frightened of losing my cool and taking someone else's life. Everything was calm as I walked inside my residence. I didn't think anybody was home at first. But, with a completed lunch for two on the table and a sink full of dishes, I realized there was something wrong. I strolled down the hall gently to our bedroom and turned the door carefully. I pulled the door open but heard no noise or activity. The room was completely dark. I went over to the bathroom and switched on the light. When I turned back, my wife was fully nude, resting on top of this naked person I'd never seen before. I was devastated. It was as if someone had dropped a 100-pound rock on my chest. Tears well up in my eyes, but I understood that crying was futile and would not solve the issue. I took out my phone and started filming. I circled the bed, filming the mass of flesh in front of me. It finally dawned on me that my marriage was finished. Even though I had been completely loyal, I recognized that all of our possessions would be shared equally. When we split assets in the divorce, I suddenly understood that the home I constructed with my own hands would have to be sold. Being physically deceived hurt more than any other kind of anguish I could have imagined. Knowing I was about to be financially ruined almost made me lose my mind because it felt so unjust. But I knew I was through with her and would never touch her filthy body again. I was appalled by what I witnessed, especially my wife. In my opinion, she'd gone from loving, loyal wife to Allie in 15 minutes. Neither moved an inch. I was quite positive they were both intoxicated and passed out. I suddenly didn't care about any damage to the home I'd worked so hard on because it had to be sold. I drew my dot four five and simply stared at them, both of them betraying me in my own bed. For a brief second, I considered shooting her, knowing that the bullets would pass right through her and kill him as well. But I came to my senses and understood that neither was worth a trip to the electric chair. And, despite my pain, I realized I could want to keep living once everything was said and done. So I drew my pistol's hammer back, hoisted the gun into the air, aimed to my upper right, and fired two shots into the ceiling. They both awoke immediately. She was attempting to push off of him in order to turn around. When he abruptly locked eyes with me, he pushed her off of him and onto the floor. Fear does not fully characterize his expression. 
but in comparison to the dread in my wife's eyes, he seemed pretty serene. She attempted to convince me that it wasn't what it seemed to be, so I fired a bullet through the bedroom closet door. She slammed the shut immediately, even though he hadn't said anything. They were sitting on opposite ends of our bed, the sheet drawn up to their necks. When I inquired who he was, he claimed his name was Marcus. When I asked my wife how they knew one other, she revealed that he had his own real estate firm. Then I questioned how long the adultery had been going on, since I had no idea my wife was cheating on me. She had the nerve to say it was the first and only time they'd slept together. So, in between them, I fired two bullets into the bed's headboard. I raised the question again after they both started weeping and asking me to stop. Marcus responded six months later, much to my astonishment. It irritated me, but at least I knew the truth. When I asked my wife when she quit loving me, she lied through tears and claimed she never did. I fired two shots into the bathroom on her side of the bed, causing her to scream as mirror glass broke all over the counter and floor. I told her she was a lying useless and that I was tired of her lies. She was plainly experiencing a panic attack, and rightly so. But I didn't care at the time. I inquired about the man's marital status. He said that he was. When I inquired whether he had any children who would miss him, he choked before confessing he had two. I told him how much. I appreciated his pointing out to me that my wife is a before we had children together. But I asked him whether having with a cheating harlot was worth the risk of losing his wife and children. He pleaded with me not to inform his wife. I advised him to stop talking since she had a 50% probability of becoming a widow at the time. I walked at the foot of the bed for the next 15 minutes, pistol drawn, trying to think. I was aware that keeping them there against their will may be seen as my taking hostages. I knew I'd have to let them go at some point. I motioned for my wife to get up and go fetch her vehicle keys. She got out of bed and started reaching down to pick up her clothing from the floor to put back on. I told her to stop, that she didn't need clothing, and to go fetch the keys. She went down the hall, returned her keys, and handed them to me while still weeping. I took the home key from her and informed her that she would no longer need it. I know she wanted to argue that I couldn't do it and that she was legally correct. A dot four five, on the other hand, tends to render legality moot. I then instructed Marcus to up, take his keys and wallet from his trousers and accompany me. I followed him outside to his vehicle and repeatedly hit him in the face until his nose and lips were bleeding. I returned after moving my vehicle so he could get into his SUV, took up his keys and urged Marcus to get up. I told him he could go home right then and confess everything to his wife, or she hear from me within 48 hours with all the proof of his adultery I'd gathered. I also told him he had 45 seconds to leave my property or a coroner would be taking him away. The fact that he was naked appeared to be a minor concern at the time. He jumped in his vehicle and drove away before I could count to 25. I returned inside, where my wife had changed into a robe and sat at the kitchen table. I went to her bedroom, took her cell phone, and delivered it to her in the kitchen. I inquired if she wanted me to contact her parents or sister to come pick her up. She flatly refused. I'd even inquired if she wanted me to contact the cops. I believe she expected us to talk things in order to clear the air. Thus she replied no. She started to explain, but I cut her off and informed her we were done for good as far as I was concerned. I told her that our house was no longer her home and that she needed to get in her vehicle and go somewhere that wasn't our place. I emphasized that after what she'd done, I no longer felt any love for her and that there would be no second chances. She started apologizing, crying, and pleading. Blessed quiet resulted after two shots fired into the double oven and one into the fridge. Having a neighbor who is more than two miles distant has its advantages. I told her that I didn't care whether I lived or died and that her actions had completely devastated me. I also said that the moment I saw her and Marcus knew together, all of my love for her changed to hatred. If Thanos could have erased her from existence in my memory at that instant, I would have done so. I told her I was struggling to keep my cool in the face of my affections for her. I suggested she go to the garage, get in her vehicle, and drive away forever. She cried her way out of the garage, into her vehicle, and drove away. That was around five hours ago. I didn't want to deal with any police who happened to turn there, knowing I could have committed a felony or two with my response. Before leaving and getting back into my vehicle, I turned off everything and secured the doors. My father has a fishing cottage that he and his mates frequent. I drove here and let myself in using the secret spare key. When I arrived, it was much too early to phone anybody. 
I decided I wanted something to drink, and I'm about a quarter of the way through a bottle of my father's Balvini scotch. Dad is going to be furious until I tell him what my wife did. I'm also quite sure it's the bottle I got him for his birthday last month. I'm at a loss on what to do. I've combed through threads on this subreddit and others in search of solutions. However, the majority seem to be folks attempting to determine whether or not their spouse is cheating. I already know the truth. So as much as I want to know the truth, the justifications for adultery all ring hollow. Other articles seem to be techniques for getting a cheater back. I'm not sure why someone would want to reclaim a cheating spouse. But I'm looking for a divorce. I want it in my favor as soon as possible. She will never be able to choose me again. I'm not a carnival prize, but rather a human being. I want to get rid of her and destroy all trace of her in my life. I never want to see or hear from her again. Is it possible for attorneys to handle everything? I have the funds to get things started. What I lack is the time, energy, and patience to deal with this nonsense. Eight years of marriage squandered. Eight years that I now believe to be one big lie because after what I just saw, I can't trust anything she's ever said to me is true. Eight years of my life were squandered on a wicked con artist. Part of me wishes I'd simply shot them both and taken my own life. But it may just be the scotch talking. I need to get my stuff tested just to make sure that didn't give me anything. Actually, now that I think about it, I've wasted away a decade on her. Her actions have devalued my life and rendered my time with her meaningless. The only thing I'll remember about this marriage is that honesty and loyalty are a thing of the past. Herpes is the one thing that lasts permanently in any relationship these days. Love and marriage are both a bunch of filthy falsehoods. I'm terribly, really depressed right now. Some I'm sure already see me as a knuckle-dragging Neanderthal for reacting with violence and threats. I also know that some people may criticize me for using one of my firearms. I didn't shoot anybody, and the bedsheets were already soiled when I did. If gunshot holes diminish the price of the home by a few thousand dollars, I can live with that. I'm simply not able to cope with this nonsense. Part of me simply wants to beat a bullet and give up. My life is over, and it's not coming back even if I wanted it to. People will claim I escaped a bullet irony by not having children with my wife and discovering she's unfaithful. That doesn't seem to be the case right now. I move from uncontrollable tears to wrath like I've never experienced. Either I confront this or I simply give up. And, for the time being, the second alternative seems to be the superior option. Maybe if I fall out and sleep for a while, things won't seem so horrible. But I have my doubts. The weather prediction indicates that things will clear up sufficiently to allow me to work in a few days. Therefore, I will need to fly the day before. For a variety of reasons, I dislike the area in which we are working. But a part of me wants to go after the task is done and never return. Part of me wants to find out where I want to start again, if I want to start over at all. What factors should I consider before choosing a lawyer? Is there a ranking system for legal services on Yelp or another website? I despise lawyers. Members of the most shady legal profession. Now, I need to locate the most tenacious lawyer I can find. Please accept my apologies for the wall of words. It wasn't quite as therapeutic as I had thought, but nothing is going to make this pain go away anytime soon. What on earth am I expected to do? What's the purpose of accomplishing anything at all? The person I was sacrificing my all for is no longer with us, and I realized today that he never existed. By no means was I flawless, but I remained loyal, I'd never been abusive. She'd never heard me shout like that before today. I was a wonderful spouse. I enjoyed being married and devoted. But for every wonderful person out there, there's a hard lot ready to dig her claws into him and wreck his life for her own benefit. F this life, my upcoming ex-wife and relationships. Now, I'm simply rambling. I guess I'll go to bed now. When I wake up, I think I'll phone my folks and tell them what happened. I'm still in shock, and I've never experienced such heartbreak in my life. Maybe I'll feel better tomorrow. Update. I didn't believe anything had posted the night I attempted to submit to Reddit since. It indicated the post was pending moderator approval. But throughout the past month, I've received alerts on my phone regarding the post on a regular basis. I logged in to check the comments on the initial article, as well as a few folks requesting an update. I honestly don't know if things could have gotten any worse for me after publishing. And yes, I'm sure some will claim what I do goes too far, is excessive, or whatever. It seems that the law agrees with such individuals. The anti-gun commentators will be overjoyed with this change. So let me get this out of the way first, so those folks can be ecstatic about what I'm up against. 
I was arrested for conveying threats, felonious assault, assault with a dangerous weapon, and a few minor crimes slash felonies. Even though I have no criminal record, if convicted of the charges, I may face up to 25 years in prison. It's unlikely that I'll be sentenced to that long in jail, but it's conceivable. Surprisingly, if I'd shot Marcus and Slash or my wife in a fit of wrath, I'd probably be facing less time in prison. Marcus seems to have confessed to the police rather than his wife while I was writing my initial piece. He told the officers he was discovered with a married lady. However, he seemed to have gained some compassion from the cops. The deputy who collected his statements was one of the sheriffs that turned up the following day to arrest me. Everything went well since I didn't object in the least. Marcus E.'s decision to accuse me was, in retrospect, a preemptive move, because the court after my arraignment barred me from contacting Marcus or any of his family members. So far, I have not made contact with his wife in any manner, shape, or form. But he achieved a handful of other things by having me arrested. I told my employer of the accusations, which would prevent me from leaving the state. Because my profession is so specialized, they panicked. They waited two weeks to recruit someone with the same training and experience as me, but now I'm out of work. That significantly hampered the process of obtaining counsel. Before I could even consider hiring a divorce attorney, I needed to first hire a defense counsel. Two days ago, I was served with divorce papers. My wife is clearly going to attempt to take me for everything. But we haven't spoken since that night. She's texted and phoned, but I haven't read, replied, or reacted to anything. I absolutely despise her guts. I'll never get over it. I'm not going to be able to move on from this. I'm not going to be able to reclaim my life. I've been living at home with my folks. They've been fantastic and quite helpful. But there isn't much anybody can say about the circumstance I've found myself in. Everyone is so focused on the criminal accusations I'm facing and the fact that I'm not going to prison right now. Even after receiving divorce papers, I'm still dealing with the realization that I've lost my wife and that my future has been placed on hold. I've heard my mother sobbing for me in secret. This is ruining both of my parents. They should not be concerned that their son may be imprisoned. They should be focused on their retirement and living life to the fullest. So I suppose I didn't simply trash my own life. But I'll be if no one destroys mine. Most days, I'm cooped up in my childhood room, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I have grounds to think that my wife is supporting Marcus, or the police in their criminal prosecution of me. She is not, without a doubt, blocking anybody. Again, I haven't spoken to her, so I have no idea what's going on in her thoughts. But if she despises me, for whatever reason, as much as I despise her, I suppose she's giving me what I deserve. I'm sorry I can't provide a more detail update. Those who are constantly in the leave and divorce them camp will be relieved to hear that this will happen come hell or high water. I simply don't know whether I'll do it as a free man or if it'll happen when I'm doing my term behind bars. I was chatting to my cousin the other night, and he said something about when I start dating again. He didn't mean anything by it, but it was so perfect that I can't even convey it. Forget what my wife did to me and never trusting any woman again, I haven't even begun to consider it. And then it dawned to me that if everything else fails, my next date might be with a man called Jerome. My lawyer is attempting to win my case rather than just keep me out of prison. That is very much appreciated, and it is just what I need, but I can't go to jail. If I'm convicted, even if I don't go to prison, my career is over. But incarceration is too much for me. I've been in shock. When I switched on the lights and saw my wife nude on top of another guy. This entire situation is becoming worse and worse. I feel like I'm watching a movie, but I can't stop myself, even though I'm disgusted. In my thoughts, this sounded a lot clearer than it seems printed out. But that was all I could do under the circumstances. My life is now in shambles, and infidelity is entirely default. Edit. There are various replies to queries and remarks in the comment area. I don't have it in me to write it all out numerous times. In a month or two, someone will offer an update. If it's me, wonderful. If not, things have become bad and are just going worse. Stay tuned for the next part.